Hey guys, it's Brian. I know some of you have started your own quantum builds, and I thought I would give you guys a little behind-the-scenes look at the build we did for our take on the Schrodinger's Cat uh, phenomenon here in QCraft. If you haven't checked it out already, you can find the link to it in the annotations on this video. But in the meantime, we thought we'd give you the grand tour of the Institute for Quantum Ocelots and Matter, with apologies to our friends at Caltech. Uh, because it's got some sort of quantum build features uh, that you might find interesting, and we learned a little bit by doing it, so we thought we might share that with you. So, uh, first of all, most of this build was done by uh, Joel Levin, the Minecraft teacher. Uh, he laid out the basic structure for the building in World Edit, and then we started messing around with quantum stuff. So you'll see over here, of course, we have our quantizer matrix. We've got all sorts of crazy sciencey stuff that Joel put in, and we have our experimental chamber here where uh, we have caused the demise of many an ocelot. You'll also notice up on the ceiling, this is kind of a fun quantum -y feature we figured out here that I wanted to talk a little bit about today. Uh, we're still playing with it, but you'll know, notice these sort of uh, funky conduits that are made from entangled blocks that sort of dynamically reconfigure themselves each time you look around. And I thought that was a neat illustration of a few things with uh, doing a quantum build, so I thought I'd show you uh, some of those. So those uh, conduits are made, not surprisingly, of colored wool, and they are made of quantum entangled colored wool. So to make that, you will need regular old wool. We'll drop some in there. And then because those blocks, as you saw, are appearing some of the time and not the rest of the time, that means they're quantum blocks. We made them with essence of superposition. There it is. I'm laying these blocks out in the crafting grid like this because if you've seen the previous tutorials we've done on quantum blocks, you know that if I lay them out in this particular pattern, that will cause them to appear half of the time when looked at from any axis, either the north-south, the east-west, or the top-bottom access, which is what causes them to sort of appear that they're dynamically configuring themselves. So if you want to do a build like the one that we did there with those conduits, first you make a quantum block like this. Now you could stop there and just use that set of quantum blocks. Again, I'm here in, in creative mode. But one tip we've definitely figured out as we've done quantum builds of our own is if you want something to really work consistently like those conduits where they're disappearing and reappearing all at once, you, Entangling these blocks, again, either the quantum blocks or the observer-dependent blocks, is the way to go. So if I drop this block back into my grid and I grab some good old essence of entanglement, now I have an entangled quantum block, which means anything I build with this, say one of those conduits, is going to always appear either all of it or none at all, not piecemeal. And that's really useful if you're doing a build, say, in an adventure map where you want a whole floor to disappear if someone looks at it the wrong way or you want to do a funky platforms so folks can get up to an area of the map sometimes, but only if they look at it the right way. Having the entangled blocks rather than just an observer-dependent block or a quantum block is a neat technique because then you're guaranteed to get the whole platform or whatever, not just part of it. So I made one set of those, and you'll see right here every set of entangled blocks I make gets a group number. I'm actually going to do the same exact thing again now. So there's another set, some more superposition. And I've now made an a quantum block with that exact same crafting recipe. So it works exactly the same. But now, if I take that quantum block and I drop it back in my crafting grid with some more essence of entanglement, I get another entangle block. And you'll notice it has a different group number. It's group 18 rather than group 17. And that concept was really important to this build because if you look up at the ceiling, as we did before, you'll see whole conduits disappearing or reappearing as pairs. And that's the effect we were going for. And that happens because these two conduits, for example, will always appear together, I think it's those two, or not appear at all because they're actually made from the same group of quantum blocks. See, there they go. And that can create some really interesting configurations. Now, when you're building with this stuff, another useful tip is you'll definitely want yourself a pair of quantum goggles, which you can uh, craft from two panes of glass and some quantum dust. With those quantum goggles on, I see 
every single one of those conduits that I built and all the other quantum stuff in the room in its superposition state. And I can actually place blocks against these if I wanted to, and that will work. And that's really important because if you've tried to work with some of these quantum blocks without your goggles on, you may find that as you turn and you look in a different direction, say you're working on this conduit, all of a sudden you turn around and whoops, oh now something else isn't there. I was working on that. Let me look at it the right way or the wrong way. And then it's not there again, see, because I'm not looking at it the whole time. But with goggles on, you always will see all the superposition stuff. And that's really cool. Now with my goggles on, I'm going to head back down to ground level here. And we're going to walk over to our Schrodinger's cat chamber. And right away you can see something interesting going on because I've got some superposition blocks in there that you wouldn't see with the naked eye. So what's actually happen happening there and how did we construct our version of Schrodinger's cat? Well, in this case, my chamber contains some uh, an entangled set of quantum blocks. And you'll see that they are glass except because they're quantum blocks when observed on this axis which I believe is the east-west axis they have a 50-50 percent chance of resolving as a solid block uh, of glass or as uh, resolving as they have right now to air and so when I conduct my observation of this this chamber I'll see this block that I put into the front wall first and if that happens to resolve to glass, then the floor of my chamber inside is solid glass. But if it happens to resolve like that, now if it happens to resolve to air though, then the floor of my chamber goes away, which is bad news for my cat because on the bottom of this chamber is some lava and that's not going to be good news for him. So now if I go ahead and dispense an ocelot in there with the floor there, he'll be just fine. Uh, however, I can just go over here and shut my observation screen, which is just uh, a classical redstone apparatus with some sticky pistons, and now I can't see him at all. If I open the screen, and I'm going to be careful not to look at him as I walk over there, and I stand here, when I turn around to actually observe him, Again, that uh, in set of entangled blocks will either resolve to air or they will resolve to glass. If they resolve to glass, that's good news for uh, my friend. If uh, they do not, unfortunately, it's into the lava for him. And, of course, in the classic uh, Schrodinger's cat experiment, uh, right now we can think of my cat as being in a superpositional state because those blocks being unobserved are in a superpositional state state and the cat's fate is dependent on them. And so on uh, sort of what, what folks ascribe to the Copenhagen interpretation of, of quantum mechanics, uh, the cat uh, should be regarded as both alive and dead until we observe him, just like our block should be regarded as both air and glass until we observe him. So without further ado, let's take a look and see what happens. And unfortunately, it was not good news for our cat.